Hi everyone! I wanted to do this mid-century modern chair makeover for a long time now, but I was so scared of upholstery that I never wanted to do it. But now is the time, so let's do it! This is what the chair looked like, but I've seen beautiful mid-century chairs that would fit our decor much better. So I hope I'll be able to do a good makeover. Okay, first thing I did was to uncover that one screw because there was only one wood plug, all the other ones were missing. So we'll see if we can replace them eventually. I then unscrewed the four screws that were holding the seat to the base. But I really had to look for those two screws that were underneath the seat and were hidden by fabric. It took me a long time to figure where they were, but everything's fine. I removed the seat and I'll be able to upholster it right after. I'm done with the base. Those two middle pieces were the only one I was able to take apart and they were holding with screws. I always try to remove as many pieces as possible since it will make it much easier to refinish. But that's all I could get this time so it's all good. I used the stole to remove the piece and you'll see me using this tool in almost all my DIYs. I don't know what it's called but it is amazing i love it so much i'm so happy it's getting warmer outside i'm able to do that kind of project outside where it's much less toxic <laughs> i used a palm sander with 120 grit to remove all the finish on it and then i slightly sanded the base with a 220 grit I was surprised how fast they went to go to raw wood. It usually takes so much more time, but this went very quickly. Then came the time to stain it, and I used Jacobian color, and I made sure I really protected our deck. I cut an old t-shirt and dabbed it in stain and made sure it didn't drip. When I was done one part, I came with a clean rag and wiped the excess. I let it dry for a couple of hours and then brought it back in to varnish it. I didn't want to varnish it outside since there's more dust and debris that could get in varnish. I wasn't able to film the first coat of varnish that I did. It was in the middle of the night and there was no good light for filming. I'm sure there's a lot of good varnishes that are made for furniture out there, but we already had this one. The reason I wanted to make over my chair was that the finish was busted. The wood was orange and also the vinyl was black, so the orange with the black was a bit Halloween-esque. Also the vinyl was breaking in some places, but the chair overall had a lot of potential. It was very nice. I never upholstered something like this before, and this was the part that I was the least comfortable with. And I know that a good trick is to remove the final, the fabric that is already pre-cut and use that to cut your fabric to replace it. But in this case, the vinyl that is in place is actually what holds you when you're seated. So the fabric will go on top of the vinyl. I use the seat as a general template, but I made sure I made it a bit bigger because then it's easier to cut it down than impossible to stretch it. <laughs> I started with the seat and stapled the front. If you have any type of pattern, it is the time to really make it straight. In the fabric that we had, there is little lines, so I really made sure they were straight. And then I checked with my finger where the fabric splits, and then I started cutting the corner so it can wrap around. I checked if I had cut enough to be able to stretch it and it might need some back and forth to cut it just enough, but in that case, it's better not enough than too much. I did the same thing on the other side. One thing I did to really make sure that the fabric was stretched is I worked with opposite. So I had the front staple, so then I was stretching the back to staple it, and then I'll be able to do the sides. I cut the excess fabric, I really pulled on it, and then stapled just to keep it in place and you'll see me hammering those staples. Our stapler is very old and it doesn't want to do the job anymore.
For the corner I cut excess fabric and then folded the fabric so it would make three equal folds. And I stapled it very well as you can see. In the video you cannot see my face but when I flipped it around and I saw that it was nice and neat, I was so relieved because <laughs> I was quite stressed about that part. But I had to do the same thing for the back so I went back to work. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of makeovers and DIYs. For the corner, I folded the edge of the fabric and really pulled on it and stapled on the bottom. Overall, the way I figured how to reupholster this chair was to analyze the way it was originally upholstered, but I made a mistake. The back was held in place on the top and bottom sides by hidden staples, and decorative pins held the two other sides. Instead, I used staples only on the bottom and pins everywhere else. So overall, not a big mistake, but I wish I had done it the same way it was done originally. Wow, the upholstery part went so much better than expected. I'm so happy with it. And I guess I was scared at first, but like that's a metaphor for my whole existence. I'm extremely scared at first, but then everything's fine. So came the time to reassemble everything together, but I found out that the middle pieces were actually glued to the base. So we re-glued it and screwed it back together. We used clamps, wiped the excess glue, and waited a few minutes. Then I just screwed everything back together. I really love it. It's exactly how I envisioned it. The wood is more of a neutral color. It really fits well with the beige fabric, but it still looked like a mid-century chair. Okay, so for the final costs, the chair was $30, we found in a thrift store, uh, the fabric was $10 for one yard, and the stain, the varnish we already had, but it would be around $10, and that's it, 50 bucks, and we have a wonderful chair. It would have cost so much if we had just bought it in a regular furniture store. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, leave a comment. I always like interacting with you and see you next week. Bye.